everybody doing? Let's get some music going. It's been so long. I'm so proud of myself for remembering what to do. <laughs> A magical savanna appears. That's right. Hello. Hey, Brittany and Amber and Heather and T-Rex and Epos and uh, there's a lot more people. Hold on. You guys are talking too fast. Uh, Ring and Ava and I saw Gus somewhere. There you are. Hello. How's it going? It's been a hot minute. Uh, let me know if the music is too loud, too quiet. What you need from me. I'm going to turn it down in my ear because it's a little loud in my ear. And I have to be able to think probably too quiet for you guys now how about how about that is that good <laughs> hey Pitsky. hey tom savannah actually doing a live stream and you actually being able to catch it that's crazy but i'm glad to have you here doing all right just tired and stressed with work and all how are you uh heather t-rex is talking to you but i'm gonna read it anyway <laughs> ruan hello it has been way too long and I'm so sorry. It's not really my fault, but I'm gonna apologize anyway. Um, it just, my work schedule, when my work schedule gets thrown for a loop, it really throws like my whole, my whole life out of whack. Basically that sounds really dramatic, but um, you know, I'm very used to working five days a week and having two days off. And so I kind of plan grocery shopping and dog stuff and social things and all that kind of stuff like around those days. But when usually when my work schedule gets changed for certain things, it means that my days off are like particularly for certain things. And so I don't have any time for content creation. <sighs> and the weather's been stupid hot like stupid i'm angry about it stupid hot so if you guys can hear my fan in the background you can't see it but i have a fan right there that's like blowing directly on me i'm gonna apologize i do i turn everything off when i record audio for videos and stuff like that because i know you can it gets a little bit of feedback in the background um but i won't i won't survive playing in here um uh, without it <laughs> the same thing like I have a window in front of me right here normally I kind of crack it a little bit to get a little bit of light on my face you know so it doesn't look like I'm playing in a dungeon um, but that is an east facing window so the sun rises on that side of my house and when it gets hot like this I have the whole blinds are like completely shut and that way I don't get any of the heat or the hot um, about an hour ago I had everything like all my windows open to let in all the cool and cold air and uh about 20 minutes ago i shut everything and trying to lock the cold air in is my uh my goal it does throw me off heather it really does oh you heard the ostrich intro you did i didn't have the game open until just now <laughs> uh Oh, you posted some DIY AC that's more portable than the wall unit? Yeah, I saw that. I have one of those, like, it stands on the floor units with, like, the big hose that goes... I'm really talking with my hands today. With the big hose that goes um, to the window. But it's in my... My goodness, that was my cup holder getting... Or my, uh... What is this called? Coaster getting stuck to the bottom of, <laughs> bottom of my coffee. Um, what was I saying? Oh, but it's in my bedroom. Which is down the hall from me. God, the condensation on my coffee spilling all over my legs. Is the nose piercing new? No, my nose piercing is not new. Um, I've had it since I was 18. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is one. Um, I actually have, I have 12 piercings in my ear. I have six in each ear, one in my nose and my belly button done. And when I was... 17 my parents allowed me to get a few of those but then they said no more and they put a, a cutoff on me and so the minute i turned 18 and could make decisions by myself i think i got like five more of them done in my nose and my i went crazy <laughs> i went crazy because i can do what i want when i'm 18. 
which was not a level of responsibility I should have had then, but I did. So no, to answer your question, it's not new. It's not new. I know, rebellious me. I was pretty much the most rebellious thing I ever did. Let's bring this up so you can see what I'm looking at. I have my notes here because it's been so long. For those of you that are just joining us, and I want to thank you guys first and foremost because when I logged on and saw that we already had 11 likes before the stream even started, you guys are fantastic. So if you haven't yet already, do hit that like button. But the name of the game for this stream is that you guys are going to help decide ooh, what I am building. So there's a menu right below me. Any of those uh, things on that menu are redeemed via Super Chat, and I can't dispute them. I can't not do them. I've got to listen and do them. So if you want to control the stream in that way, that is how you do it. But if Super Chats are not your thing, we also do uh, free to participate polls so that you can help decide what happens in the zoo. We have quite a graveyard of things, and I really want to try to use some of them. And as I say that, I look at like the vast variety of things and I really don't know what we're gonna do. Um, although I was thinking, actually, I, that's a lie. I wasn't thinking, I'm thinking now, I was thinking like feeding platform, like that. Did I duplicate that or did I bring that one over? I duplicated it. Let's not do that. Let's actually move it so I don't have to use more than I think I have to. We'll set this here just because I'm not quite convinced if that's what I want to use it for or not. But since it's been so long, this is our little stream zoo. We've got quite some unfinished projects, which is uh, typical of my style of building. Uh, we have our ticket booth here. Let's get some, some good lighting on this ticket booth here. We have our ticket booth. Go away now. Ticket booth here. You enter in and you have our Komodo dragons, which was, I think, Amber, right? Yeah, Amber. Super chatted for Komodo dragons. So we made a little adventure style Komodo dragon habitat here. I really like the indoor versus outdoor viewing. And I like how small it is. I'm, I'm kind of into smaller habitats right now. We have our lighthouse with our, do we call it like a, was it a gaggle? No, that's geese. There was some word, some collective noun word for seagulls. Anyway, all of our, our Sam seagulls. Uh, and then we have our peafowl, which need a roof and a little bit more foliage probably, but our peafowl are all running in there. It's a walkthrough habitat. Coming out to our cheetahs and the peafowl. The peafowl was a vote. Peafowl was a vote. But cheetahs were from Tom. And look at this, we already have uh, baby cubs. Oh, we have three baby cubs. How cute. Anyway, cheetahs in there. Don't mind the fact that they could totally walk out that way. Not possible because escapes are turned off. We have our Chevalsky's wild horses here, which were T-Rex. Thank you so much, T-Rex. And then we have our Caymans. Uh, Shells Bells. <laughs> we have our Caymans. And then we have our conservation center which was also amber this needs to be finished up and then we need to add a small animal in here and out here that's what this little dirt patch is for hey sam how's it going and then we have our capybaras and friends so it's <laughs> capybaras and uh ant eaters and this was shell spells again shells bells i didn't realize you did caimans and also these guys i don't think you're in chat but if you watch this back thank you i appreciate you uh do i spy an alaskan klikai or a small husky behind me she is not a klikai those things are tasmanian devils disguised as mini huskies cute enough but oh my lord uh she's a husky mix so her name is nalu she's actually pretty big she just looks small because she's behind me uh, but her name is Nalu. She is almost two. Are you almost two? I think she's almost two. Uh, so still a puppy. <sighs> oh, no, I don't want to show the door, Tom. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the color of the door. So, 
I'll show it to you, but I'm not gonna tell you what color it is. I'm just gonna show it to you. See, look, simply conservation with this beautiful layout and such. And such what? But we have to. I don't, I don't have to do anything, technically. Unless it's on the menu. I don't have to do anything. Hey, Dot. How's it going? I forget. Was the door blue or green? I... No comment. <laughs> no comment. We are going to... It's aquamarine, which is both green and blue. Way to uh, lay on a fence. Sit on a fence, lay on a fence, walk a line, whatever the saying is. Be in the middle. Planet Zoo needs some Tasmanian devils. I cannot wait... Cannot wait for the next Planet Zoo update, information, DLC, something. I want something <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I want to know what they have plans. Show the door $100. For $100, I will agree that the door is any color you want it to be. But yeah, I really, I really, really want something. So, speaking of something... Uh, fencing for these guys. So we obviously made this front section. We're going to continue to build for the Cayman because that's what we're doing. It's not a stream if we don't gently bully Savannah. I, I mean, that's true. Did you decide to start another franchise zoo in the near future? I did, Sam. And I have some very preliminary things drawn out and then the heat wave hit and I have only been able to spend like an hour or so in my office in the mornings on my days off. Um, because when I get home, it's way too hot and I've been cooked and I have no energy left. Um, so it's all in here. <laughs> it's all in here and it will be started. I will let you guys know because you guys are here at the stream. So you get some little sneaky peekies. Or I guess privy to some um, information before everybody else. It's going to be a desert biome. And sure, we can add peafowls in there. <laughs> but it's going to be a desert biome because we did... Um, Tali Zoo is tropical. And then we did... Uh, Winfield Zoo was like alpine taiga. And I am in the mood for uh, desert. Snardo Blardo. What a name. Hello. You're really into franchise content at the moment? Yeah, I'm really excited. So I uh, I have some plans. This is not really a proper fence for crocodiles. That screams liability. So my thought was is that we could do uh, fencing either this or I guess we could keep it as that. Or we could, this is going to be a vote. I'm just kind of setting up some things. Um, we could use this, which I haven't used a lot. We could use that. Okay. So uh, background fence is what we need. So it's going to be around here and around here to kind of complete the habitat. So we're going to have, I guess this is a good enough viewing. We have metal barrier and wood barrier, and then we have chain link and mesh, I guess. So, let's get this going. What kind of fence? We want metal, wood, add another option, chain link, and mesh. I'll go over them again, just so that you guys know what it is. Ask my community. That's what the button says. So, metal. See where my mouse is? Metal barrier. Wooden, I guess, log barrier, chain link, and mesh. And we can recolor this. It doesn't have to be green. Desert zoos are awesome. The biome looks really great. I agree, Dot, because there's something about the contrast of the blue sky and kind of like the orange of the ground and everything that like blue and orange is a really cinematic and pretty color combination anyway. And so it just like pops. I know, Tumbly's not here to lose. That sounds so mean if you don't know what I'm talking about, but hopefully, hopefully they'll pop up soon. You're currently doing a sandbox zoo, which is planning for all animals franchise zoo so I can figure out the layout beforehand. Very nice. 
I know, Brittany, doesn't that sound mean? We love, we love Tumbly. Have I played in a tundra biome? No, I have, I know the amount of inside jokes. Uh, I have played, I've built in, that's a lie. That was not in a tundra zoo. I was gonna say, I did a Christmas build for um, Zoof's contest a while ago, but that wasn't in a tundra biome. Okay, did you guys vote? Oh, I clicked the wrong button. Go away. Go away. Okay. Did you guys all vote? Are we voted? Have we voted? Are we good? I'm gonna end it. Let's see what you guys picked. Oh, that was completely unexpected. Mesh, okay, cool. We all then, let's do this all the way around so that it is all clear. I have a hair. Does anybody with long hair relate to that? That like I showered and now I'm shedding and I can feel little hairs <laughs> tickling me, especially because the fan is on me. You won. Oh, you got fourth place, Heather. You wanted the metal. I actually liked the metal, but mesh it is. So here we go. We will start over here with our, what am I doing? With our crocodile habitat, caiman habitat, caiman habitat. So we'll line this up with this height and that way it looks nice. This actually goes with this really well. I like that, but I also kind of want it to be not straight off that way. So let's do that. There we go. Perfect. Now, now we just have to go around the entire habitat. You won for once. It's so funny to me, like, you know, cause obviously more people are watching than, than are in, uh, in chat actually. So I'm always curious, you know, who is voting and who is winning and who is losing. It's your first time catching a stream. Well, welcome, hello. Glad to have you here. I haven't streamed in a while. Life has been busy. Life has been extraordinarily busy, but it's actually, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought it was gonna be so much hotter in my office already, and I was dreading it. Because the problem is, is it's, it's been stressing me out that I haven't been able to get um, lots of videos out and things like that because I have so many ideas. Like I wish, I mean, I guess I could show you my like to-do list or my idea list, but there's so many things written on it. And I just haven't, the, the heat sucks all the motivation out of you. And I know I've mentioned it a few times now, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more because I, I hate it so much. I live in San Diego for a very specific reason. I mean, one being it's where I'm born and that's where all my family is, but it's not supposed to be this hot. And there, uh, Matt told me yesterday, I guess there's a hurricane in Mexico in some parts of Mexico. I, I don't know where it is because he just mentioned it last night, but it's made it incredibly humid for me. Like I walked outside a couple days ago and I was like, I don't live in Florida. What the heck? <laughs> I don't live in Florida for this specific reason. Why is it so moist out? I hate that word, moist. But crappy weather deserves a crappy adjective. So yeah, it's just, it sucked all the, all the motivation from me, especially because when I go to work, I'm not inside. I am outside 80% of the time and it's been even hotter at my work. It's been 102, it got up to 106 one day, which is just a, that's just a stupid number to be out in 106 degree weather. No, it's awful, 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 awful. If you could pick just one, would you choose African or conservation pack? Ooh, that is a hard one because the Africa pack came with all the extra plaster pieces. And you guys will see because if you haven't followed my social medias um, or are on the Discord, I am remodeling River Rock Zoo and the amount of plaster that I used. <laughs> 
think I used like 80% of the build is plaster. Um, so I love the Africa pack. <sighs> but I also used a lot of the conservation pack. You know what? I honestly, I might say Africa just because that, the aesthetic of that pack, I love it. Yeah, I might say Africa. I don't know, that one's so hard. Because, and in, in people that like to build like the itty bitty, really super detailed things might disagree with me because the conservation pack came with a lot of really good, small detail pieces. And I love that it did because that means people are making awesome blueprints for me to use. But I really have never had the patience for like uber detailed, really teeny tiny, take two hours to build one little thing kind of building. Um, so that, that might be why I lean towards Africa just because I personally, as a builder, use Africa a little bit more. Hey, the light one. How are you? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> you were so surprised by that. I know, Tom. So one of the reasons, one of the things that I'm really enjoying about remodeling River Rock Zoo is the fact that it was my very, it wasn't my very first, but it was my first real serious project and the first real popular project that I put up on YouTube. And so when people first found my channel, they, that's what they knew me for. And, uh, thank you to everyone for loving that project and complimenting it and everything. But when I go back into it, because I started it before a lot of the DLCs, before I really had good building skills, um, I go into it now and I'm like, my goodness, this could be so much better. And so it's really fun to go in with the building skills that I have now and just reinvent it kind of thing with new pieces and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be very exciting and I hope you guys, I hope you guys do enjoy it because I'm, I really enjoy it. If you guys can tell by the pictures, the layout is completely, completely changed completely changed. So <gasps> what is that giant otter named Pitsky? We can totally do that. Thank you so much, Pitsky. Let me go ahead and write it down before I forget. We'll start working on that next. The giant otters are fantastic. Thank you for picking those ones. Let's see money bags, hearts, whatever you want to put in the chat. Some love. Always, always. I guess my notifications aren't going to go off on the screen, which is great. <laughs> uh, giant otter. Giant otter named Pitsky. Beautiful. We will get on that. Build a habitat with capuchins and beards tapir. Bards, beards, tapir. <laughs> However you say that. Uh, you can make that happen. It's a super chat. Down below is the little menu for you if you want to make that happen. So let's see. Um, I just wanted it to be a little bit, it felt a little bit off kilter. So let me connect this up and then we will add another little thing on the right hand side. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Completely lost lost what I was talking about. A nice water-based exhibit needs a guest cooling station too. What does a guest cooling station entail? Just like a mister? I guess. Okay. So there is that. And depending Depending on what we put here, we might have to do like a, a secondary fence along this side. Cause like I said, depending, like we can't put, probably couldn't put meerkats on this side because they might be able to just climb that. I actually don't know how well meerkats climb. I know they can climb up on like little logs and stuff like that, but they're not like climber climbers. Oh, a little splash pad. That might be cool.
Uh, would the otters be next, or is there another animal on the waiting list? No, the otters are next. As far as animals go, we have pretty much put in everything that was donated for. Uh, the conservation center that Amber donated for is the project that is most kind of undone, but mostly because I'm, I'm waiting to figure out what animal goes here. And we kind of talked about some of the small animals that are uh, critically endangered or, or just endangered going there. So I'm kind of just waiting for a, for a donation for that. But no, they would be, they would be next. And I'm wondering... Okay, should, so this was going to be another viewing section, I think, because why not, right? But, hmm. I was maybe going to do, but the path is too close. I was thinking... It would be cool to have like a little above viewing section, but I don't know if I can fit that right here. Thank you, Ikea. Hey, Amanda. You miss my voice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Speaking of packs, what do we think the next will be? I don't know, but I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So people have been um, speculating that because they've been doing lots of heat related things that it's going to be some sort of desert pack, which would be fantastic since I'm starting a desert franchise series. Um, but I never get that lucky. So I don't think that's what it's going to be. It couldn't possibly work out for me that long or that um, well. I know we should find out soon, right? Because October would be kind of the next, like, um, cycle month. Okay, we need to figure out what color this fence is going to be. And I think I'm going to do just brown. I think. Brown is a color you guys can't argue about, right? Like this. A little darker. Throw out some colors for the fence. And if somebody says blue, ban them, Heather. Or green. Those colors are banned from the zoo. Brittany? Epos? Oh, Heather! <laughs> you were supposed to be... You were supposed to be, like, the voice of reason in this chat. Oops. <laughs> No, serious colors. <laughs> serious colors. I mean, or you could just say brown. I think this looks great, but I just wanted to leave it up to you guys if somebody had another color. You can't tell me to go away this time. <laughs> but it's so pretty. Sorry, I didn't know it was uh, a no color. Epos, I'm only joking. Never the voice of reason. Brown, I'll leave it here for now and maybe we can revisit it. So we need foliage for these guys, right? So, what are they actually like? We need... Oh, wow. Tropical Grassland Aquatic. <sighs> Should we leave it up to a vote? What are our options? So, here. This is going to be... This is going to be the poll. What foliage? What foliage? We'll say... Cayman Needs... So that would be the three, the aquatic, grassland, tropical that I just named. Or we'll do uh, Tundra, just to give the chaos makers an option. Uh, temperate or, sure, desert. Go for it. Have a blast. Vote on that. A banana tree. That would be cool. If it is a desert pack. You would love the maned wolf. That would be awesome. But the maned wolf is not one that I think of when I think of desert. So I feel like they might pick more, more obvious animals. More well-known animals, I guess. Because they typically try to pick animals that are really well-known uh, for being held in captivity. And the maned wolf, like the, the San Diego Zoo does have a couple of them. At least they did last time I was down there. 
So let's see if I can pull a couple trees. There, a, a tree can go like here or something like that. Let's see, maybe. I really, I guess if we just kind of incorporate these here and there, it won't look so weird, right? So if we like, God, it still looks strange, but if we like put these trees with the other trees, I mean, I guess that doesn't look too bad, right? I just want to, I just want to use them. I want them to be gone and there's so many of them. <sighs> there's so many of them. Fossil Rim has a red wolf breeding program. Oh, very cool. It's still beautiful though, I know. The main wolves are really cool. Really, really cool. That's a, that's a big tree. Maybe it goes over here. It's too big of a tree for that little spot. Let's put it right there. Okay, we used two, we used two trees. Is the entrance the Oregon Zoo entrance? It was inspired by it, I believe. I did use a reference picture and I, I think I'm remembering correctly that, uh, that it was the Oregon Zoo. All right, let's see what you guys voted for. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> I didn't want to do, t I didn't want to do Tundra stuff. <laughs> oh, goodness. Somebody still needs to uh, pick an Arctic animal so we can use all those dumb Arctic rocks. <sighs> Will there be a speculation video in the near future? I don't know. Those ones are hard for me. Those ones are hard for me. They take a lot of planning. So Cayman needs one. So let's see. I said not continent, biome, aquatic, grassland, tropical, right? That's what it was. Aquatic. Hello. Aquatic. Yes. Grassland, tropical. Well, someone threatened to donate for polar. Oh God. Took a different Arctic animal. <laughs> I want an Arctic animal, but maybe, maybe not that one. Oh, dromedary camels for a desert pack. We already have uh, a sign for them. Yeah, that would be cool. Ooh, what about these? <gasps> no, that's not the tree. I was, I was thinking that was the Mapingo tree, but it's not. I love the Mapingo tree. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, oh, we have the corkwood tree. These are kind of cool. I always forget about these ones and they have really interesting um, shapes to them too. I like this tree. Let's do, let's do a little tree on the island. No, nah, no, I changed my mind. That's too big. We could do a bush. Sure, a bush bush here and there we still got to cover this up with like rocks and such oh and we still got to finish the other side of it too <sighs> forgot about that uh, the weather in the uk is very weird at the minute it's stormy then it's sunny then it's hailing and then it's sunny again and then it's raining really hard that sounds miserable and not like something i would enjoy <laughs> Um, that's kind of how we are now too. I think on Friday, it's supposed to be 90 degrees at my house, but it's supposed to be raining in 90 degrees. Like I can't, uh, I can't, it's going to be, it's going to be awful. I'm so, I'm so mad about it. I don't want it to be, <laughs> I don't want it to be like that. don't want it to be the weather sounds like spring but add tornadoes yeah yuck the michigan zoo had koalas for summer they just sent them back to san diego zoo for the winter though oh very cool yeah heather in and especially in san diego like what the heck what the heck man what else i like these too these are very um crocodile habitat ish right but the leaves are so big and I almost don't feel like they go with well maybe they do maybe they go with this plant 
Let's see. These came in the aquatic pack. That is huge. Where'd the smaller one go? There we go. It's around the edge, I guess? I don't really know what I'm doing with, uh, with the foliage in this habitat. <laughs> I feel like three biomes is too much to choose from. Oh, this is the tree I was thinking of. Is that? I want some height. Can we get rain while it's sunny? It's weird. Hey, MS Queen! Rain and 94 degrees is everyday occurrence in, um, is that Mississippi? During summer and fall. That's miserable. I don't know how you do that. No, no thank you. No thank you at all. <gasps> the Mapingo! Should we do the Mapingo tree? I don't know if I like, oopsies, not the fence. I don't know if I like these right here. Let's do Mapingo? Question mark? I like the Mapingo tree. It just has such a cool like bark texture and like some of the branches without <clears throat> without leaves on them and stuff. I think it's so cool. Like that. There. I like that. And then do we have more aquatic? I know we have them, but where are they? I want more of the little aquatic leafy things. Not those, these. The water hyacinth. We can kind of put these like this, I guess. Is this how you use them? I like I don't ever use this plant, so I don't know. Is it weird? I mean, okay, so let's do this. We'll put this here and we're gonna recolor the water so that it's kind of dirty. And then maybe you won't see the ground. Because I don't want these to look like they're growing out of concrete. But they're kind of... These plants kind of just grow... Do they grow in dirt or do they float on the water? Like duckweed. I'm going to I'm gonna pretend, even if they don't, I'm going to pretend that they grow like duckweed. Because that's what I want. And then we can do this. We can change the water color. Because this water is way too clear. Um, terrain, water, water, color, and color, and something like more green than that. Apply that, but then we want the transparency up, like so, so you can't really see the bottom. There we go. Let's go back to color. Something like that, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Looks good, right? Oh, thank you, Miss Queen. I appreciate that. Yeah, something like that. And then we can use... Now, we used these rocks because they were put down for blind building, I think. But we can also use some of these ones to mix in with them we'll change the color but that way we get a little bit of variety and that way i can potentially maybe put these on the ground to hide some of my things that i don't really want to uh fix like the the triangle triangular Dingy thingy midjiggies. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Goya, do you think so? So we'll do this and we'll put these kind of rocks down and in and then we'll put a plant behind them. But if I make these a group before I go too far, then we can recolor them all at once. Like a so. We want kind of a gray color. Kind of, I guess, goes with... These are a little bit more blue, though. The, um... Well, not that blue. Getting closer. Getting closer, maybe... 
picking colors is really difficult. That, I think that's good enough for my colored eyes. <laughs> Green! <laughs> uh, maybe these are too blue now. Maybe they're too blue. Actually, I want the low light one to be black. There we go. Is that better? So many colors to choose from. Okay, I think that's better. Yes? Yeah, that works. Oh, I like those rocks. That's a nice boulder. That's what it made me think of. Gosh. I'm still shedding. Okay. Uh, what was I doing? More rocks. More rocks! Always more rocks. Can never have enough rocks. Let's do like a little jutted out rock, like so. And I think, are those the temperate or the tiger rocks? These ones right here. Is this, oh, it's the tundra rock. Neither. That's not a boulder, it's a rock. <laughs> so tundra. Tundra. This one? No, this one. Just so that we keep mixing it in and we keep the variety going. Because I don't want to spend the time to fix all these little triangular pieces, so we just hide them. Hide them like they never existed. Because that's what responsible people do. They ignore their issues. I don't know how that relates to placing rocks in Planet Zoo, but we're going to go with it. Where'd my aquatic rocks go? Or my faux rocks? Here's a is. Oh, wait. Be a part of the group. That way I can recolor them. I can't not think of Shrek and SpongeBob every time. <laughs> I've been seeing so many uh, SpongeBob memes recently, and I don't know what it is. Um, I enjoy them because Spongebob was one of the shows that I watched uh, a lot growing up as a kid um, because it was just kind of always, always on in my house. But um, recently I just feel like, I feel like there's been way more memes that are coming on like all my social media pages and stuff like that. Like just showing up. Just showing up. Let's do that and this. There we go. See? I think that looks nice, yes? You're burnt out on tanks for diving? Yeah, you know, I like underwater viewing in certain habitats and stuff like that, but not every habitat is going to have underwater viewing. So for something like this, I think it's way more common just to have, um, what was it? Tropical and grassland. Just to have like a pool that you can look down in uh, for your caiman. Way more common, I think. Let's see, is there some more, like I want maybe another like broadleaf bush plant? If that exists, not this one. That's too deserty. Hey, Jens. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. I guess we could put some of this, right? Let's see how this looks. doesn't look bad just kind of as a backdrop for this kind of stuff like in the spots of the habitat that wouldn't be super well groomed because they're behind all these behind all these rocks Ugh, my nose itches the fan is blowing little bits of hair and they're tickling my face mm, what else because I want like a, a bush for back over here I guess we can do elephant grass to start. We could also put some reeds in if we wanted to. 
I don't think this is gonna be the right color. No. What's this one? Whoa, that's a that's a huge tree. In a different habitat, that would be really cool. But not for this one. Um I really like these bushes too, but they don't they don't fit real well for this. No flowers. What are we building now? This is for the spectacled caiman. Spectacled caiman habitat is what we are building. That's too green. Too green, too blue, too small, too big. I sound like Goldilocks today. Can't make up my mind on what I want. Periwinkle? Question mark? I mean, to be honest, do we really need to put too much in here? Because the Caymans, I think, are going to be pretty satisfied with, you know, just what we have. I can put maybe another one of these here. Like that. I, I kind of like that it's hanging out like this. That Realistically, I think maybe guests would destroy it. Can I have the... I want the grass, please. Thank you. Um, but I like how it looks... If we're pretending guests are going to be considerate and nice and not ruin everything. There. I think that looks actually pretty good. Because I wanted something in this corner to kind of balance it out. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of grass on the island. Just to give it some, some detail. There we go. The keepers are not going to be able to get on that, that but that's mostly just for them to uh, sun themselves. Mostly just for them to sun themselves. Very cool. Alright. Is there anything from our graveyard that we can use? I don't think so, to be honest. Nalu looks like she died on the floor behind me. We can maybe put one of these in there for ambiance. Ambiance. Oh gosh, we have all of this too. Forgot about all of that. I know they're not going they're not going to use it, but You know what? Maybe it'll look better if it is inside of a rock. Like if it's coming out of this rock over here. Like... Like that? And we could always put another one. Like a, a couple of them, right? Oh, but I can't get them close together. I hate the fact that this is a habitat item and not... Like an enrichment item and not just a item item too low. Maybe... No, we'll just do one. We'll just do one. Just thinking out loud, maybe it needs more fencing. Just thinking of all the little children hands that could be bit off because they stuck their arm in there. So, I agree. Um, the guests are not going to be able to go on this side or this side. But my thought is actually to create kind of a, like a backdrop. And my first instinct, because I kind of always go to this. Oh, hello. Little dog. You can't see her. But she's come, she's come over to say hi. My first instinct is always to grab these logs and do... Nalu, not right now. Go lay down. She, she comes up and she like noses my hand and when I'm doing something with my hand on the keyboard, it's very inconvenient. <laughs> I know she just wants love, but you need to be a self-sufficient. Where'd you go? Nalu, go lay on your bed. That's a good girl, lie down. What a good dog. I know she wants some love. She's a very needy dog. I've kind of created her that way because I love her so much. So I give her, <laughs> I give her attention. Had to pack up the baby to head to the airport. Did you tell me where you were going? 
Or are you dropping somebody off? I don't remember you um, needing to go to the airport. Apologies if you did already tell us, but anyway, my go-to for uh, a habitat like this is to build like a backdrop fence kind of like this. It's really simple and easy. Just something tall and uh, to break up the view like that. And then we turn a couple of them so that they're not super tily like this and like this oh your best friend is flying in very cool so you're picking up somebody you're not leaving very cool put this all together and then as you can see we can kind of move this to line up with the fence like so and we can do this oh i never uncovered my bird I might have to take a break and do that. Poor guy. He gets covered with a blanket in um, at night to tell him, like, it's bedtime. And I just realized, because I can hear him making some noise in his cage downstairs, uh, that I didn't uncover him. He's still covered in a blanket. Oops. He gets to sleep in this morning is what that means. So, yeah, something like this. What do we think? Uh, oh, yeah, bamboo actually also works as well. We can definitely put that up to a vote. Let me just put this here. Like that. So that would be what the logs look like. I like that. But we can also do... Uh, how's your tortoise adjusting to home life? He... <coughs> excuse me. He loves it. He's a very good tortoise. He is... Um, he uh, eats a lot. <laughs> He's funny because I get his lettuce, his like salad put together in the morning. And I'll go out there because he's right in my backyard and I put his little bowl down and then he has a house and I knock on it, like knock on the roof. And then he comes out, he like comes running out to eat his food. <laughs> like a, like a little dinner bell for him, breakfast bell, I guess. So he's a very cute tortoise name is Theo. Theodore the tortoise. Yeah, bamboo could work too. I picked the green one uh, because then we can recolor it. You need a video of Theo. I thought I had posted one before, but if not, um, yeah, I can totally do that. He's a fun little pet. Tortoises are fun because um, a lot of, oopsies, a lot of uh, reptiles don't, like, I don't know, I feel like they just don't have personality. Like, they just, they just kind of exist, you know? Like, some of them do, don't get me wrong, but some of them are just kind of, like, indifferent. Like, if you just left them in their cage for the entire time, you know, that you had them, as long as they had everything that they needed they would be perfectly content and happy but Theo totally knows like when we come outside when the dogs go outside he comes out of his house to say hi and you know if I let him out he he wanders around and he'll follow me and so tortoises are just really um really fun and friendly in that way you know that he he kind of he acts like a little dog <laughs> oh you used to have red-eared sliders Red-eared sliders are cool. Unfortunately, around here, there are way too many of them because people get them as babies and they don't realize how big they grow. And then when they don't want them anymore, they put them in ponds and rivers and lakes around here, which is not good. And then we have tons of red-eared sliders that shouldn't be in the ponds and rivers and lakes and things. Okay, so we have bamboo and we have wood. This will be a vote, a vote, a vote. Uh, background fence, I guess. Oh, let me spell fence right. Bamboo or wood. Only two options, you've got a 50-50 chance. Oh. Get, get, go away, thank you. 50-50 chance. I love tortoises, they're such cute animals and have so much personality. You want to see him running out of his house? Okay, well, 
if the uh, weather participates with me, I'll put him out in the grass and let him run around and I'll post a video in, uh, in our Discord and probably on Twitter and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. Koa. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be right back. Um, the, the dog and the cat don't seem to be getting along as of recently, and I just heard Koa bark and the cat hiss. So let me just go make sure nobody's killed each other. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Nobody's dead. But Koa decided he had to go out and, uh, and pee <laughs> when I went downstairs, so. <sighs> oh, there we go. I was like, it's a 50-50 vote. Let's end it before it gets 50-50 again. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. There. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Koa has a stick up his butt recently, and um, he's just on edge around Mango, my cat. Wood is the winner. Um, and I don't know. Mango, like, won't really do anything. And Koa just kind of goes up to him and starts being a jerk. So they've never really hurt each other. Like, never actually hurt each other so far. But I'm, I'm always worried that that could happen. Because Koa is, he's a, I mean, he's a big dog. And Mango's a cat. Either that, or I have seen, because um, I, I used to work in a veterinary office, I have seen dogs come in with scratches on their eyes and stuff like that from getting into arguments with cats, and I just, I don't want that to be the case with Koa, obviously, because I really don't want him to scratch his eyeball. 
get his eyeball scratched, really. My cat keeps using me as a trampoline between the window and her bed today. <laughs> Kiwi, my other cat, does that to Matt all the time. For whatever reason, when Matt is laying in bed and uh, Kiwi either gets out of bed or onto the bed, she jumps like and like directly on our bellies. Mostly him, honestly. She never really jumps on me for whatever reason. Uh, but he it makes him so mad. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh, but he gets so mad at her for doing that. I don't blame him too, because it's like she does it when we're in like a half sleep state. And so it's an awful way to be woken up. You know what this habitat needs, I think? It needs a, it needs a little bit of Dren grass. I think that's what it needs. It needs a little bit of drain grass because every habitat needs a little bit of drain grass. The best grass. Hey, Primal. How's it going? Gosh, Primal, for some reason, whenever I see your name, it reminds me of... Um, the fact that I need to up my game with <laughs> Jurassic World Evolution 2 content. I've been so busy, and so I really, I mean, honestly, I haven't put out a lot of content in general, but Jurassic World Evolution 2, I can't forget about it. There we go. I think that looks good, right? Yeah, Tom, it's a perfect quote. It needs to be a t-shirt. Needs to be a t-shirt. I need to, I have some some t-shirts with uh, with my merch and stuff like that through Teespring. Um, but I need to, I need to make a couple more that have like my weird, my weird quotes on them. If we do this, we can kind of make it like a continuation, right? And maybe if it doesn't... I'm wondering if we connect it or if we just kind of put more rocks to fill in these little gaps. Maybe more rocks, because I feel like if we connect it all together that it'll be too much. So let's go find our rocks. Rocks, rocks, rocks. You can already guess the color of that t-shirt. <laughs> you guys are gonna make me hate the colors blue and green. You really are. And speaking of merch, I do have some new stuff to show off on stream. It's sitting right next to me. For those of you that follow on social media and are on my Discord, <clears throat> excuse me, you will have already seen them. But I am already preparing for Halloween. And I'm very excited. Not as excited as I will be for Christmas stuff, but very excited for Halloween stuff. I think that's beautiful. You guys, this is like the most finished habitat I think we have so far. I think this habitat is a slow, also, oh, also very beautiful for flamingos. Yeah, it could definitely be for, for, for flamingos. Fl -fl 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 flamingos. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Heather. Yeah, there's the link to our Discord if you want to sneak a peeky before I show them off. They're sitting right next to my hand, so I'm going to grab them in just a minute. But um, I started a little uh, merch store a while ago and have been making various Planet Zoo related stickers. Um, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. So if you guys want some Planet Zoo related stickers, I did pin that comment at the very, very beginning of our stream. So that link will lead you to my website. And that's where I have all the stickers listed. And soon, for those of you, if you can see in the background right here, I'm a very avid pin collector. Um, 
So very soon we'll have our very first Planet Zoo related pin for those of you that collect pins. So I'm very excited about that. Very, very excited. So if you're looking for a way, basically my point in bringing this up, if you're looking for a way to support the channel a little bit and you want some very cute little Planet Zoo related stickers, that's where you can find them. That is where you can find them. Your favorite colors will be the death of me. Yeah. Tell me about it. You love the stickers? Great! Which ones did you buy already, Ruan? I feel like I've added uh, a lot recently. <laughs> Um, but I know which ones, like the, the permanently tired, uh, especially the sloth and the koala are pretty popular. And then the, uh, Chevalsky's wild horse stickers were pretty popular as well. So I'm glad you guys like them because I work really hard on, uh, I've actually been working with a graphic designer just so that it doesn't take me too, too much time, um, cause I don't have too much time to spare. Um, but it takes me a while going back and forth with him, uh, designing them and, and such what. So glad you guys are enjoying them. You are going to have a ton of stickers by the end of the year, Heather. Yeah, because Epos, the t-shirts are all through Teespring right now. My plan in the future is to have that not be the case. Um, it's to have the t-shirts be brought basically in-house as well. And I will be the one, you know, making them and, and having them in stock and shipping them from my house. Just like I do the stickers and the pins and stuff. But I haven't gotten that far yet, which is why only the stickers and the pins basically will be sold from my website and then I will package them out and ship them and, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I ship all over the place, um, Hunter Boy. At least it should be. If it, if it doesn't work, please send me an email um, because if my website for some reason is being finicky on that. But yes, I will ship them. I will ship them anywhere for free. I don't charge for shipping. <laughs> I don't like charging for shipping. I think the price should be the price. Um, you know, so yeah. So yeah, if you guys want to want to support the channel, I appreciate it as always, but it's a way for you to support the channel and also get something. Cause I do believe, uh, that <coughs> hold on one sec. My goodness, <laughs> he's fine. You can see him right there. I brought him in here with me just so that he would be um, away from the cat. 
honestly, from what I can gather, because downstairs we have two kennels side by side. One is Kiko's, one is Nalu's, and then Koa doesn't have a kennel because he's a trustworthy boy. Um, he, but he loves the kennel because of how we trained him to love the kennel. So the kennel doors are open when I'm home and he was laying in it. So uh, to be honest, from what I can gather, my cat is being an asshole <laughs> and uh, is being mean to him. So that was his, re I don't know what happened, but when I went downstairs, Koa was in the kennel and uh, the cat was kind of outside the kennel on the side. So... <sighs> My children, we need to get along with one another. <laughs> but he's okay. No scratches or anything like that. I will preface this by saying he is the largest baby that I have. And uh, anything that makes him uncomfortable or scared, he's a husky. So he does yelp and yell and whatnot. So he probably wasn't even touched. He was just threatened, I guess, <laughs> if the cat came over and hissed at him or swatted at him or something like that. Um, but yeah, he's totally, he's totally okay. He will survive. <laughs> he's gonna, he doesn't want to be on camera. Now he's laying right behind me. But he'll be okay. I gotta figure out what is going on with them because I've had, I mean, Mango is 10 years old. So I've had him for about 10 years and Koa is almost six. So I've had him for five and a half years or so. So it's not like they're newly living together it just i think something happened and they somebody defended themselves and now they have this perception that when they get near each other it's going to be an issue like mango was sitting on the stairs when i tried to bring koa upstairs and he was like hell no mom i ain't walking past that cat <laughs> so i had to move mango so he would walk upstairs with me yeah that is true amber and on Mango especially, as much as I love that cat, um, he is he is kind of a professional jerk. Yeah, sudden changes. I, something did happen. They they got in some sort of argument, and now they just can't get past it. Nalu's kind of scared of the cats too, and I honestly think it's because she like watched what happened. Hey, you guys are fine. Go lay down on your bed. Kodog, go lay down on your bed. Just relax. The cat can't come in here. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Cat can't get in here. I mean, technically the cat could get in here, but I'll pay attention to make sure that that doesn't happen. I have the door slightly cracked and the fan blowing in here because the AC down the hall in my bedroom is blowing this way. So I'm like trying to funnel the cold air in as best I can. Uh, I should put some shade somewhere. There's shade over there. Does that count? <laughs> Look, if I change the sun. There. Shade. <laughs> but I get what you mean. Maybe we'll do a shelter at uh, some point too. Um, we need signs. Wasn't I using those awesome signs? I was using these signs because those are mine that I accidentally placed... I thought I brought some, oh, there we are. Some of these ones from um, Lowbury, I think they are. But I love them, they're perfect, perfect zoo signs. And this one I was talking earlier, like I don't have the patience to do like the itty bitty detail stuff. This is what I mean, like this is itty bitty detail stuff. Like look at how flat that bottom part is. It's all made with um, font pieces. And I just, pff, I can't, I don't have the patience for that at all at all so wide wide spectacled caiman where are we gosh all the way down keep going keep going keep going spectacled caiman there we go beautiful oh low bro there you are yeah, I love these signs. I've been using them everywhere because they're perfect. <laughs> they're perfect. I really, really like them. So there we go. Um, actually, maybe we'll do just one. Kind of like the one by the leaf. There we go. Maybe we'll do some, some trash cans and some benches and things like that. You know, make it actually look like a zoo. 
I like this trash can. I didn't actually see this trash can until like very recently. And I like it. Trash can there, trash can there. Yeah, that's that's exactly from Lilo and Stitch. I feel like that's exactly what's happening. And Ko is just more dramatic because he's loud. Um, is this recolorable? It is. Oh, but not the top part of it. I honestly I don't I don't know. I don't think I like it as a feeding platform. So let me put it back over here. And let's do some food. Food, like so, I think. And then what type of enrichment do spectacled caimans want? Uh, there we go. There are so many animals now in Planet Zoo. You just assumed he got scratched on the nose. He actually didn't get scratched at all. I mean, at least that didn't leave a mark or anything like that, so. Oh, you updated the habitat pack with more enrichment prompts? I'll have to take a look. I will have to take a look. I previously didn't really use a lot of... Now, I know the keepers are not going to be able to get over to this, but I'm going to put it on this side anyway. Actually, maybe... No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to put it over here. Um... But I've recently been using more and more um, blueprint items just to get those tiny little details and stuff down. We can move this kind of over here. Why won't you place right there? Are you too? Are you really too close to the barrier to the fence? Wow, what a finicky little thing! All right, well, right there it is. Right there it is. Uh, where was I? Enrichment. A rubber ducky. Everyone needs a rubber ducky. There we go. There. I think. I think that's pretty great, don't you? Hey, Cassidy. How are you? I think that's pretty awesome. That's pretty fantastic. If I do say so myself. <laughs> All right. Oh, Capybara is going to have more babies. I feel like <laughs> we're, we're going to be overrun with Capybara soon. Should I just, you know what? For now. Oh, offspring imminent. You're going to have more babies. Let's, let's do this. Contraceptives for everyone. No more. When the babies grow up, we're going to have to pay attention to that. But I feel like if we don't stop it, we are going to be overrun. You're making a flamingo habitat right now. That's awesome. I, for the desert franchise zoo that I was talking about, um, I did a poll a while ago and I forget what the answer was, but that's basically deciding, um, deciding, oops, not duplicate, which animal is going to be the first one because in a desert zoo, I really didn't want to do flamingos as the first animals, even though they're my they're my go-to, right? Because flamingos in the front of a zoo, I just feel like it's like what you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, but I like this tree better than this tree right here. So we're going to move this tree. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you part of a group? Oh, you are part of a group. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So let's move you over here. Oh, no. Okay. I thought this one was connected with the plants. Let's separate you from the group. And let's move you. Sure, you can go right here. Just because I have to use up these trees. Make a pull to keep all the capybaras or no? What do you mean? Like keep them or sell them, I guess? Okay, well here, we'll do, <laughs> sure, uh, capybaras. Uh, we'll call it capy control. 
Should we control them or let them breed? Oops, not that. All right, control them or let them breed, basically. Those are the two options. Your local zoo, depending on where you go first, the first animal you can see is the Indian elephants or rhinos. Oh, that's um, unusual. Normally big animals like that aren't the first. Uh-oh. I'm gonna regret this poll because it's already 70% let them breed. Great. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. Well, that is our Cayman habitat done. Maybe I was thinking maybe more. I don't really like how plain this is over here. So maybe we had another little plant right here and some more grass. <laughs> I knew it was going to be chaos. I don't know. I was hoping I was hoping that you guys would be like responsible. But I guess I ask for too much, don't I? I have too high of expectations. Just add more of this everywhere. Vienna Zoo has koalas and giraffes at the front. Oh. Your work is done. Thanks, Primal. Thank you. And then I got to do this plaster on this side because that's what's looking so incomplete to me. All right, you guys. I can tell. I can tell you've picked chaos. Yep. All righty. Okay. I said I got to do what you guys uh, said to do. So, place your bets. How many capybars are we going to have by the end of the stream? I think that's all of them, right? Did I get the mail? Yeah, okay, cool. There we go. Babies everywhere. That's right. This is like um, peafowl breed like crazy like this, too. We'll have 15, 47. It's <laughs> a big jump. Okay. Uh, Pitsky, giant otters. Where are we going to put giant otters? In our little zoo. I want to fill in this space with something. But maybe this, excuse me, this habitat kind of fills in this space, which makes sense. So we could do that. That I feel like is kind of getting into desert. This right here seems to be a tropical section. So... We could do giant otters next to the Cayman, or we can do giant otters over here. I'm not gonna stream for too much long. Question being, I guess we could just do this. And we could, ooh, what if we did um, like an upper deck? So let's just pick this for now. Bring this up to here make it a little bit bigger that's maybe too big one more down like this and then if we do this kind of thing let me do the terrain first so working with path <clears throat> Working with path and terrain is going to be the pain in the butt, but we're going to make it work. Like, connect please, like that. There you go. So yeah, you can like, you would walk down here, obviously, or you could turn off and come over here and this would be kind of an upper viewing area. Let me make this squared because I want it I want it squared like that. It's going to stick out a little bit more, but there we go. What do we think of that? 
Oh, by the way, thanks, Fanta, for the compliments um, on that tiger that I'm working on. Oh, I didn't know that was you because your name is different. The tiger is phenomenal, Primal. Like, I would hang it on my wall. It's beautiful. Yeah, something to frustrate anyone. Okay, let's pause. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that works. And then... Do we do... I could do water here. I know I already did the path, but... Let's do deeper water. Right here. will be like their little water pool area. And then we'll bring this forward like this. And then we could do a rock wall, like a rock background. Or maybe, maybe it goes like this. Just for future stuff. Because I don't want this zoo to be entirely, like, perfectly flat. I do want it to have some, some sort of uh, height differentiations and stuff like that. Let's do this, because this isn't going to be part of the habitat. This is just, this is just backspace. So let's level all this out as best we can. Perfect. And then we can kind of smooth this stuff out. And then will the water go here? Of course it won't. Stupid water. Drain. Why? Oh. No, that's dumb. We need the water to go here. And the problem is, is that needs to come up. And I don't think... Water and terrain, not that high. Will the water go there now? It will. Beautiful, actually that was pretty painless. So there you go, there's the water and then we can bring the path back, which should, should go back like that. Oh, actually it would go all the way across if we wanted it to, but we don't need it to. How long do you think for the new DLC? We're getting pretty close. I, honestly, I would hope that we would hear something. What's today? Today's the eighth. I, maybe the week of the 19th that's like two weeks away if we're gonna get like an October if we're gonna get like an October release of a new DLC yeah maybe maybe two weeks away maybe three weeks away depending on when in October I really hope it's like only one or two weeks away because that would be that would be fantastic. Twenty seventh of December. No, that's way too long. We'll we'll definitely hear before that. Do we know what it's going to be? No, we have no idea what it's going to be. If we reuse this. the otters just so that it matches with everything right I think that's good oh I got hungry all of a sudden <laughs> it like all of a sudden hit me and my tummy is grumbling I've been doing so good about eating better so I went to the doctor a month ago now I think it was and I got some blood work done um, because I was feeling just like super lethargic and unmotivated and just kind of crappy now part of that was because I do 
really struggle with both anxiety and depression and that can be pretty exhausting on its own. Um, but it was a little bit more than that. And so my blood work basically showed that I was eating too much bread, too much starches, too many carbs, things like that. And so my doctor was like, you really need to seriously think about eating. Cause I eat from home a lot. I don't, I don't eat out a ton, like fast food and stuff like that. So my thought was like, well, I eat, I eat at home all the time. Like it, it has to be healthy. Right. Um, but when you're eating like pastas and things like that, it's not really that healthy. <laughs> um, so I have made the conscious effort to make more vegetable based things. Like for example, um, I would make like a pasta salad and have that as like my kind of snack or on the side for lunch all the time. So instead of pasta salad, I made broccoli salad, which was really, really good. Um, and then like yesterday, two days ago, I made like a tuna salad with dried cranberries and stuff like that in it, which was really good as well. And so now since I've been eating that way for a couple weeks and I really honestly haven't had almost anything like starchy, like I've definitely had carbs cause there's carbs in almost, almost everything really. Like I've had, I've had a soda here and there and that's definitely sugary carbs and stuff like that. But for the majority I've eaten a lot more vegetables and now that's what my body it wants and it kind of craves. And it's really nice to get to that point where I'm no longer craving like the bad stuff. I want the good stuff. And it's also really helped improve my energy levels and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of overall feel a little bit better. I know shocker eating well, feeling better. <laughs> um, but I'm very proud of myself basically. So my point in telling you that is that I have some stuff to make a really good turkey sandwich with like lettuce and cheese and avocado and whatnot. And uh, that's all I can think about right now. Cause I really, <laughs> I really want my, my good tasting food and stuff. I'm almost finished with the tuna salad that I made. So I might have to make more. And I found a recipe for asparagus salad, which I'm skeptical on. I really like asparagus, but I kind of like it just like steamed and plain. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about like steamed and like mixed in with stuff to make a salad out of it, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, I've been saving lots of like healthy recipes and stuff like that. And we have, if you're on the discord, we have a food channel. So if you have any healthy, I've honestly, I've been searching like keto stuff, even though I'm not. I'm not trying to like specifically do a keto diet. The keto diets just have very little carbs and like no bread and stuff like that. So that tends to be the recipes that uh, fit well with what I'm trying to go for. Um, but if you have any ideas on like vegetable based stuff, I would appreciate it. Cause I'm trying, trying really hard, trying really hard to eat better. Blood work is how you caught spices condition. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a look inside what all your organs and hormones and all that kind of stuff is doing. So how is spice doing by the way, Amber? I hope she's doing well, staying comfortable. The adorable old little girl. She has the cutest face. <laughs> I love the pictures that you share. Her little face is absolutely adorable. Um, but yeah, so for anybody that's trying to eat healthy, I, I feel ya. It's, di it's difficult. I hated it at first, but now like yesterday I bought those, um, or not yesterday, but I bought those little mini cans of Dr. Pepper because Dr. Pepper was like one of my biggest vices, I guess. Is that what you call it? Like my biggest guilty pleasure kind of thing. I just, I love the carbonation and the, the caffeine and the sugar and everything that's in it but I haven't had like a full Dr. Pepper in two weeks now. And I sat down yesterday and I had one of those mini cans for, um, with lunch. And I almost couldn't, I almost didn't finish it because I was like, I don't want this much soda. This is a lot of sugar. Like it didn't, it didn't taste as satisfying to me anymore. And I was, I was honestly, I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited because, um, that's something that's, like I said, has been my biggest kind of struggle to not have. And so the fact that I was like, yeah, I'm 
good. I've had enough soda. I was like, wow, way to go. Way to go, body. <laughs> way to not crave the bad things. You went two years without soda and your first one after burned? Yeah, I've heard that when people like cut it out for long periods of time. And when I was in high school, I ran track and cross country. And so when I was heavily training, I didn't have soda. I, for like the whole season, I would go without eating, or uh, eating, go without drinking soda. And then as soon as the season would end and it would be kind of like an off period and stuff like that, I would go right back to it um, because I just, I loved it so much. Like this, this is so bad, but my, my um, high school teachers, I had Spanish as my first period and I would show up to school everybody else would have like coffee or tea or something like that i would have a can of dr pepper and i would drink it in my my first my spanish class and it's so bad for you <laughs> so bad for you my spanish teacher would call me out on it and i'm like i can do what i want i have a metabolism of a 17 year old <laughs> dumb take it from me don't do that Honestly, my teeth are what suffered the most, drinking soda like that all the time. My guilty drink is ice chocolate and ice cream. That sounds fantastic. You switch to flavored water? I kind of have two. Dr. Pepper is the best, Caitlin, I know. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And even, um, even little things, like I think I told you guys weeks ago, like my coffee is usually... Um, coffee, lots of milk, a little bit of creamer. And then I, I used to put hot chocolate, um, powder in it because I liked mochas. Um, but now I've been, I slowly kind of put less and less and less and less. And now honestly, like my coffee, this, my coffee this morning, this one right here is, um, is just, it's cold brewed coffee concentrate, almond milk, and a little bit of creamer. And that's it. So it's. Even that has gotten better. Like my, my taste buds have kind of adjusted, I think, to the taste of coffee a little bit more as well, which is really nice. Cause that's, I was drinking a lot of sugar in that. Cool. And then I think we can put the barrier over here. So if we get this over here, like so, we can kind of hide the barrier in this rock. And shorten this because this is way too long. I hated that you had to switch to diet soda once, but now the normal um, just tastes weird to me. And see, Matt drinks um, diet Pepsi all the time. And that, I mean, he loves it. That's, that's the soda that he likes. Um, I will drink it, but I find that I get... Why are you not building... Oh, because I have this selected. There we go. Um, I find that when I have it, I get through like half the can and I'm like, this doesn't taste good anymore. <laughs> it doesn't taste good to me anymore. So I can have it little bits, but not a ton because I kind of just get tired of it. But yeah, he drinks it all the time. Sparkling flavored water is a really good alternative. See, and I, I agree with you, um, and that's what I've kind of been trying to go towards more. And at first I thought like, you know, oh, I'm, I, what is happening there? Uh, I love the carbonation is what I was thinking. And I was worried about like the caffeine and stuff like that, like not having it and, and having it be addicted to that and whatnot. Um, but I honestly think it was more the processed sugar than anything because when I would have flavored water, I would miss I would miss the sugariness of this. And so that was that was a struggle too. It was like I just wanted the I wanted the loads of sugar. I wanted the loads of sugar. Oh, thank you, Heather. So, anyway, long story short, I'm very proud uh, that I have cut back so, so much. 
and I have so much more energy and motivation to do things. We'll make this pretty later. I feel like I say that a lot, but <laughs> we'll make that pretty later. I just wanted to throw the otters in here um, so that we could see them kind of run around. You look away for one second. I know they're opportunistic, Heather. No worries. Um, okay. Oh yeah, that was me, by the way. If anybody has a leucistic African buffalo, please let me know. I need one. I need one very bad because it's holding back creating a video because I'm OCD and I can't do it without it. Zoopedia. Uh, nine males and nine females. Holy cow. So two to 15. So let's vote. How many otters? Let's do two. Let's do five. Let, okay. Yeah, two, five, eight, or 15. Go for it. We're building for the giant otters that uh, Pitsky donated for is what we are doing. All the otters. <laughs> yeah, they'll go right in here. You can never have enough otters. I went to the Santa Barbara Zoo and one of the first things that they have is Asian small clawed otters right at the front. Um, so cute. They were all out and about playing with some of their enrichment and running around in their enclosure. I did film, so I have some vlogs. I have three vlogs that I need to get through. I started filming the um, Central Florida Zoo. No, Zoo Tampa. Zoo Tampa is the one that I started editing. The Central Florida Zoo is one that's already out on the channel, but I started editing the Tampa Zoo vlog from back in May. And then I have vlog footage from the Charles Paddock Zoo in Atascadero. And I have vlog footage from the Santa Barbara Zoo in Santa Barbara. So. I have lots of vlog footage to edit, but it's already like right now, I'm just starting to kind of sweat in here, even with the fan and everything, because like I said, east facing window, it just heats up in here. Zoo Tampa is beautiful. I was very um, pleasantly surprised, Sam. I didn't I didn't look at any pictures of it before I went and it's it's awesome. It's awesome. I know, I hope I get that buffalo soon too. Gus, I spent, I spent a stupid amount of time in Sandbox buying every single African buffalo. I think I had 400 of them by the time I like gave up um, just to see if one would like pop up in Sandbox. And I keep checking in, um, I keep checking in franchise mode to see if anybody's put them up for sale or anything like that. But yeah, see, just normal ones. Yeah, more vlogs. All right, what'd you guys vote for? I almost forgot that I started a poll. End the poll. Okay, five is doable. Yeah, the albino, um, sorry, the African buffalo only has a leucistic pattern to it. So it, it's still a white one, but it's leucistic, not albino. Um... Yes, I am positive that there is one. My good friend Leaf uh, was fantastic in sending me over the um, the rates for when it shows up. And it has like a 0.25, like a 25% chance. No. 0.25% chance. Really, really low chance of happening. Um, and there's pictures. Like if you Google, there are pictures of, of people that have them in their zoo i just i need one in my zoo i need one in my zoo okay so five so let's do three females okay i was gonna do more conservation credits but oh god you guys are all terrible oh well so three females and one male hello Oh, I still, <laughs> I still have it um, sorted for that. Send to the zoo, in the zoo. So yeah, I really need, I really need a leucistic African buffalo. Look at him go. 
this habitat almost looks too big, but I think once we, once we add like the wall and stuff like that, it won't be. Look at them. God, they have such funny looking little faces. No, I want you. Such funny looking little faces. <laughs> With their little teeth. Uh. For the wooden glass fence you have on the otter habitat, what wood piece is that? This one over here? This is from the aquatic pack? It's uh, the panel, is that what you're- Oh no, this one, I'm sorry, is from the conservation pack. Right? Europe pack. It's from a pack. <laughs> this one's from the Europe pack. I never, I never miss the opportunity to diss their face. I mean, but come on. Look at them. I love their little chest patterns, but like, look at, they just, they run around like that. <laughs> you haven't seen it before? It's not normally colored brown. It's, um, what is it colored? It's called... It's called a European bridge arch. So let's do bridge. Uh, it's normally colored this color, white, like that. And then it has this piece to it as well. But I just like it, like, that's one of the major things that I did for River Rock Zoo, Pfft, just wait. I couldn't believe how irresponsible I was with pieces in that build. Um, Tumbly, hello. But part of what I did was deleting a lot and like there's those slats on the upper part, like the cover that you enter in. Those were all individual little pieces. So I switched them out for the conservation pack pieces that is one piece but has slats. So piece reduction was fantastic in all that. Would you mind checking your habitat pack? I will absolutely. I'm not gonna do it on stream, but I will definitely take a look. Have you posted it in um, our Discord? That would be the easiest way for me to uh, to take a look at it. But yeah, look at these little guys. <laughs> oh, you're not smiling. Why are you not smiling? Where's your teeth? Let me see teeth. Do they only show their teeth when they swim? <laughs> Your notifications have gone wonky. It's probably YouTube, it's probably not you. Yeah, and the blueprint server? Okay, perfect, fantastic. I know they are psychos in real life, but look at them. They're so cute. Like, look at this. It's adorable. Should we take a picture of him? Her? Should we take a little picture of you? Whoa, whoa. Um, how do we get the right, the right angle on these teeth? Like that. Cute little otter. We can zoom, zoom, zoom. Maybe that's a little too much zoomed. Perfect. Good enough. Hey, take the take the screenshot. Thank you. It's so cute. Pitsky just got back. Looks great. Yes, we need to name one Pitsky. So let's grab Avita. And perfect. Did I spell it right? Pitsky. Perfect. That's our little Pitsky right there. Look at how cute. I guess I should have asked you, do you want it to be a male or a female or do you care? But so cute. Little teeth and little, little old man eyebrows. <laughs> oh, I have to sneeze and it's gonna go away. Oh, I hate that feeling. Anyway. So there's the start of our otter habitat. It's beautiful. Let's take thumbnail pictures. Like 
this? Not like we can see the name, but we'll take your word for it. Oh, <laughs> it's behind me. I always forget that. Yeah, you're just going to have to believe me. Let's do this right here. And then we'll put the otter's face in the bottom right-hand corner. And I don't... Let me see, actually. This is going to pop up in your face for just a second. Oh, okay. We're going to think really, really hard about opening my files. Can I please have this off the screen? Okay, perfect. <laughs> I don't think I have a picture of the giant otter. No, I have a green screen picture of the small clawed otter, but not the giant otter. So let's get one of these guys uh, to face the sun is the hardest part. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, no more grass. Oopsies, no more grass like this. There we go. And then we can get a little picture of our otter friend. this as close as we can let's zoom in just a little bit a lot of it I guess there we go and otter oh it's little whiskers are kind of lost with the green screen huh I wonder if I back it up a little bit if it comes back huh Bummer. Cuts its, cuts its whiskers off. I wonder if I do... I wonder if I do it differently because they're on the rocks? Is that maybe why... Maybe why the whiskers are cut off? cute little noses we only have time left for blindfolded photoshop i know i was oh see it cuts it off on that side too okay well then the picture i took is fine i was uh i was sure somebody was gonna make me uh blindfold build today but i got away with it i got away with it oh goodness Yeah, I am going to be finishing up very soon. It's starting to get uh, starting to get warm in my office. Very warm. And I'm hungry. <laughs> and I'm very hungry. So I'm going to wrap up very soon. But what I want to do, don't leave yet, is I want to show you in person, I guess, is what you would call this. Let me quit Planet Zoo in person my little halloween stickers so we have three of them oh really we're gonna we're gonna freeze right then okay perfect we're back it's a baby black jaguar if it'll focus on that it's a baby black jaguar with a trick-or-treat pouch dressed up as a mummy so that's the first one and then we have a timber wolf it just has bats and a full moon behind it. He's dressed up as a skeleton. That's the second one. And then the baby grizzly bear with a pumpkin dressed up as a goat. Excuse me. So those are the three new stickers. I beautiful. <laughs> three new stickers. They're pretty big too. You can see they're they're kind of the size of the palm of my hand. A little bit smaller than that. But yeah, those are the three, three new stickers that are on the... Oh, you thought it was a skunk? <laughs> it's a black jaguar dressed up as a mummy. Because cats like to play in toilet paper. So I figured if anything that they were going to dress up as, it would be a mummy. And then a skeleton and a ghost. So those are the 
Those are the Halloween stickers. So they're available now. I know Halloween's a little bit a ways away, but I wanted to be prepared. So those are the three new Halloween stickers. So if you're looking for a way to support the channel a little bit more, uh, the pinned comment has the link for you. And uh, I am coming out with a couple very soon. I actually have three more sticker designs, which are very similar to those, and you'll find out why, but I'm not releasing those for a few more weeks. And then um, pins. I have a pin that is going to be announced very soon. So yeah, the wolf's your favorite. Thank you, Primal. I very much appreciate it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, hitting the like button, the subscribe button, all that kind of fun stuff really does help me out. I have been behind the ball on my YouTube stuff. So leaving a like now helps out more so because I haven't been uploading that often, but I really appreciate it. And I like that you guys hang out with me and I'm sorry it was so long. Next Thursday, I will also be streaming. So um, depending on whether we might go back to the 10 a.m. time or I also might keep it at 8.30. I'll just have to see. But yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Goodbye.